God help us. So Solo the movie is about this gentleman who's left all by himself after everyone else is destroyed in the world by global warming and environmental pollution. So um, he's, you know, he's seated in his bunker until both food and water runs out. So you know, he decides to step outside and go scavenge for both. The movie focuses on bringing out the impact of pollution and global warming, things that ha are happening today and we are taking them for granted. We wanted to show the repercussions of that and hope that um, whoever watches the film um, will contribute more to the environment. On the journey of um, Jesse Awaya being the soul, we see the challenges he comes uh, across. Uh, we see also like there are creatures out there which are you know also hunting. The world has really evolved. Um, while he's on also this journey, we find out his attachment to the teddy bear. And he trips down into you know a cliff. In the process, the, the, the teddy bear that he was holding, you know, falls down. And this starts to agonize him because it was the only thing that you know he had that reminded him about his family especially his son javier finds water which is the only clean water he can find at the mo at, at that moment in the caves from a person who died a long time ago and the water has been there uh, we see how devastated he becomes now when he finds that he's lost the only water he had left the movie ends in a positive way to, to show that there's still hope, we can still save our environment and, you know, yeah, there's still hope for human beings. You know, I did some background, you know, I did some research on my role, especially, you know, looked on some movies that were done uh, in the past, movies that, you know, probably had the same theme as Solo. So it wasn't that, it wasn't that hard. Uh, you know, after seeing them, at, at least they gave me an idea of what I wanted to do, or how to go about the character. Uh, w working with Uaya was very good and he's always there. He's very dedicated. There's no time we called him to come and do some pickups or voiceovers and he said, I'm not available. He'd cancel everything for so long. The other thing uh, is he's really good at taking instructions. Uh, he pushed himself, I can say. We were dangling him off the cliff, he was game with that and he played a really good uh, role in just coming through for us. If it wasn't for him just being cooperative and being flexible, we would have done and achieved what we did with the film. Playing Javier was you know, quite a challenge because you know, at some point we had to shoot in the hyena caves and those caves were so low and you know, because of my height I had to uh, squat or I had to I had to crouch a lot of times and you know this was really tiresome it got really tiresome at some point we had a nimble crew we were only five people on set it was I Kara the producer come director we had Yawaya the main character we had our good man who's the assistant camera who's Jose and then we had Billy who was doing behind the scenes so we had a total of five people on set which is a very small crew, crew. So everyone had to multitask. So for me, I was uh, DOPing, doing the camera work, and still I was doing the set design. Uh, I had still done uh, the costumes. Uh, before we could get to the stunt work, I had to make a harness or a rig which could support his weight over a cliff, just to get that shot and you know to make it look that perfect. I, the day we were shooting at the mines, it was so hectic. And that's the day we had missed the sunrise. We had left home at 4.30, but we still didn't get the sunrise. So uh, I was already mad. Because <laughs> we had no sunrise. We, we didn't get that sunrise. And I was counting, if we don't get the sunrise, it means another day of shoot. So I was trying to weigh in the cost and the importance of that scene. And I remember going to tell Greg, we have to shoot sunrise another day we must and he said i'm not shooting again i am done i'm not shooting again so 
I remember that time I got pissed. I told him, no, you're shooting. That's what I want. I want. I wanted that to be the end scene. I could not see how we are going to have an end scene without a sunrise. Either a sunrise or a sunset. Uh, working with Kara as my director and producer, I think Kara is such a sweet person. She's such a sweet director. Uh, I would say she's very creative. She really helped me to bring out my character and it was so easy. Me and Kara have worked on other projects way back. Uh, being the producer and the director, it was easy taking instructions. She is very stern and strict, I can say so. <laughs> she, if she wants something done uh, in a certain way, she just says, you know, I want this, and she, would, she wouldn't take anything less. Also, she really pushed me in that uh, on time. She'd be like, hey, you, uh, you should wrap up this scene. No more shots for you. You know, it's done. Let's go to the next scene. We had a very small budget for this film. So she made it work. So that's kudos to her, because without her, I think uh, we wouldn't have achieved what we achieved with the small budget we had. Working with Gregory Q, I would say that, you know, it was a nice experience because, you know, I realized that Kyo is someone who's really passionate about his job. And he's, he really sets his mind in what he wants to do. His lighting, his lighting skills are really good. Greg is also, he's just a perfectionist in what he does. Working with Gregory Q as my co-director and my cameraman, my DOP, um, Greg is a technical person. Um, him, it's all about getting the perfect shot, getting the perfect lighting. But he doesn't understand that. Uh, the more time we take, the more expensive the show becomes. And me being, me being his co-director also put me in a position where I had to reconsider his, um, his views, my views. So you'd find we were, we were clashing sometimes being honest i haven't come across someone who uh, can work and light as well as and as professionally as greg and he is just an idea factory his creativity had so much to do with how solo looks like right now from how the costume looks like from how the set was the things you wouldn't even notice yourself he would notice which is not a bad thing which is not a good or bad thing. It's a good thing on its own, but it can also be a very frustrating thing when you're running out of time and have to work on a budget, but it's good. He's very professional. For Jose, we've done a lot of projects with him as Kiwo Films. So he's very handy. He's good at taking instructions. So we also got him for this project. He was doing most of the camera assisting Whenever I needed uh, help in terms of managing just the shoulder rig, he would be there. Also, he helped a lot in lighting. He's the one who was bouncing the light. And uh, we love just having him on set. Billy is an amazing photographer. His photographs uh, speak for themselves. They tell a story. If we put Solo the movie and we put Billy's photographs, you'd understand. You'd see the journey of Javier in Solo as it was. Yani, he, he, he's, he's that good. Ken Bahati came in and um, he did uh, the cable removal for us. So that's how we ended up with a scene of uh, Wayaya dangling on a cliff, but you still, you can't see. And it looks so believable. That is thanks to uh, Ken Bahati. For the color grading, for the sound and score, it's all uh, thanks to Shortwave, who is mostly our sound engineer, he does all the, he adds the edge, an edge to, to our sound where it's required and all those things. The reason we went with Raymond Ofula for, for the uh, voiceover is because, first of all, his voice is amazing. He has a powerful voice and uh, as it is, he is the voice of the, of the, of solo. He is the one who lets the viewer in on what is happening and what the film is all about. Having done solo and seeing, you know, the, the impact and the outcome of the film, I think as Kiwo Films, where we are heading as a company and as filmmakers, 
it, we, we are not seeing ourselves going back to thinking inside the box. We're going to be doing outside the box kind of projects which are just off the edge, which are unique, exclusive and well thought through. So the future is really bright, it's lit.